Hello, I hope this video finds you doing well today. Today we're going to pick up where we left off from our last um, video discussing the pipe organ um, when we're, we're looking at the different um, families of pipes that can be found within the organ. We have quite a bit to cover today, so um, we'll jump right into it. To begin with, um, I'd like for us to first um, cover the two um, families of pipes within the flu stop family that we didn't get an opportunity to look at last time. Both of these types, mutations and mixtures, are not intended to be played alone, but instead are more designed to bring out the different harmonics of other pipes, and as such are almost always played together with those other pipes, with different ranks of pipes, whether they be principles, flutes, or strings. The first one we'll talk about um, is the mutations. Um, the idea of the mutations is these are pipes that are cut at irregular intervals. So we're used to with a principal, a flute or a string, seeing at a regular a 16, an 8, a 4, or a 2. Mutations will usually either be at a 2 and 2 thirds, a 1 and 1 third, or a 1 and 3 fifths. Um, this allows them to bring out the various harmonics that exist within in the pipes. With the two and two thirds, um, an assault in our potential, our specific instrument, bringing out the third harmonics, and then the tiers, the one and three fifths, and the um, larigot one and one third length pipe, bringing out the um, harmonics of the fifth. Um, these allow the, um, a little bit of color um, to the sound and can be very useful not only from an ensemble sound to kind of bring out those um, more interesting and colorful harmonics, but also make for a very effective solo work. Um, we'll now hear a demonstration hearing both the mutations against other stops to see how they develop and change the sound. The 8 and 4 without mutation. The eight and four with the Nassat two and two thirds mutation. The eight and four with the tiers one and three fifths mutation. The eight and four with the Larigot one and one third mutation. An eight foot stop by itself to demonstrate foundation. The two and two third by itself. The one and three fifth by itself. The one and one third by itself. The eight and four paired with all mutations. The final family in the flu division that we'll be looking at are the mixtures. Now mixtures are actually made up of several different ranks of pipe. Um, so when you pull the, the draw knob for a mixture, you're actually activating several different sets of pipes that will be playing against um, the pipe that you have already, the principal courses that you will usually add mixtures to. Uh, much like mutations, mixtures are rarely, if ever, played by themselves and are usually added to principal courses in order to add a great deal of color to the top and bring out the harmonics across the entire division that, the, um, that you're playing with. Um, they're not rarely used more for solo work, but they're more used for um, large chorus pieces where you're using a full set of eight, four, two foot principles or flutes and then crowning it with the mixture. Um, this helps bring out the different harmonic sounds, adds a lot of color, and it allows the instrument to have an increase in volume without necessarily muddying the texture and allows for a great deal of clarity. To demonstrate this, we'll have a couple different musical examples. The first one will be uh, um, 
the hymn Praise to the Lord the Almighty, with the first half of the hymn played on a standard principal chorus, um, 16, 8, 4, and 2, with the mixture added in the second half to demonstrate um, how it brings out the different colors and harmonics of that principal chorus. The second example is actually going to be two parts. The first part, you'll hear a contrapuntal passage, very um, dense um, um, passage of different, um, different lines moving together um, from Dietrich Buchs to Huda's Prelude, Fugue, um, and Chacon. With the first example, basically featuring a large um, number of different stops on the organ to create a great deal of volume and sound, and then the second um, example will contrast that by using a lighter texture, mainly consisting of a principal chorus with a mixture on top to demonstrate how the mixture adds a greater degree of volume while at the same time not sacrificing clarity. Now that we have covered the different um, subfamilies within the flu family, we will now move on to exploring the reed family. Now, as discussed in our previous video, um, reeds produce sound by the air passing through the pipe and actually passing over a metal reed, which resonates, very similar to a clarinet. Um, these stops in organs add a lot of um, color um, and flair. They're usually very um, very bright sounds that um, are able to cut through an entire ensemble of other pipes um, to add a lot of color. As a result, proportional to the rest of the organ, most um, pipe organs will have much fewer reeds than they will have um, um, flue pipes. Um, but you know, oftentimes those reeds are found each on one, a few on each division to kind of help add a little bit of color throughout the entire ensemble. Now, you can use these reeds often. Um, softer reeds can be used very effectively for quiet solo work. They can also be added to an ensemble to add a little bit of color to, say, a principal chorus, something a little bit different. We'll start by hearing a couple examples of this with a reed called the Chalmé, which we have on our um, swell, our um, Brustweg division of the organ. We'll first hear this playing um, with an ensemble to show how it adds color, and then hear a short excerpt from a piece, a short trio by Josef Reinberger, um, showing it in a more solo quality.
Now our instrument at First Methodist has a very distinct reed called a trumpet, or specifically it's a trumpet on shamad. Um, this is one of the most distinct um, pipes on the case, um, and you can see it, it's actually um, sticking out horizontally, um, and it's visible in a number of the demonstration videos that we have. This is a very powerful trumpet sound that is really designed specifically for solo work. It really does not, it's so powerful, it really kind of can overpower the rest of the instrument and is often not, very rarely if ever used in, a, in an ensemble sound and is strictly used as a solo. We'll now hear a short excerpt um, from a festival trumpet tune by David German um, demonstrating this powerful reed sound. Finally, we have an example of a reed chorus in our instrument at First Methodist in the form of a 16-foot posaune, a 8-foot trumpet, and a 4-foot trumpet in the pedal division. This, um, these four reeds, when compared with the principles and flutes of the pedal, can allow for a really powerful sound that can be very effective for pedal solos as well as for very large ensemble pieces. To demonstrate this reed chorus, we will be going back to the Buxtehude, Prelude, Fugue, and um, Chaconne, starting with the opening pedal solo from the Prelude. <laughs> This concludes our analysis of the different pipe families within the organ. We're going to be doing another final video um, in this series exploring different organ building styles um, and having an opportunity to contrast two very distinct organs with one another. I hope you join us for this next episode. Thank you and have a blessed day.